Hello guys, hello all. Uh, my name is Evgeny. Uh, I work in Cool Automation. And I'm going to introduce our devices, our production, how we're going to connect our devices to the HVAC systems. And uh, uh, the basic information about CoolMasterNet and Cooling Net. So, uh, our pres my presentation is going to be uh, in three parts. First one is to introduce ourselves, who we are. Uh, second part is, part is to uh, introduce different types of air conditioners uh, that we support. And the third part, the final one, is to uh, explain you about our devices, CoolMasterNet and CoolLinkNet. So, let's start. Um, all about us, about the company itself. Uh, we are four co-founders uh, who founded the company in uh, uh, 007. Uh, maybe if you're familiar with a uh, few of them. Uh, it's Igor Midberg, Sel, who, who is responsible uh, for the air conditioners themselves. Uh, he has uh, these science degrees in mechanical and electrical engineering. He is responsible for customer support here in our company. Uh, Alexander Holodenko, who is the CTO, he is responsible for the programming. Alexander Troitsky, who is the hardware uh, developer responsible for the engineering. And we have Ron Zauder, who is uh, responsible for the business development. Uh, that's it. Now, a little bit about the uh, air conditioners. So we have, basically we have three different types of air conditioners. One of them is split, this is the simple one. We have multi-split multi -split and uh, VLV VLF systems. What does it mean? Split. Split, as I said previously, the simplest uh, configuration, one indoor, one outdoor, the communication line uh, runs between them and the gas pipe. The monitoring and um, controlling abilities are performed by uh, IR remote. Uh, that's it. By the way, uh, we have an ability to connect to uh, split with one device and to VRF systems with another device. So. Uh, later I will explain you what I'm talking about. Uh, Multi-split systems. Multi-split systems, uh, again, the same, the same configuration as split. The only difference is that uh, exactly as, as is, as you can see on the screen, uh, just a second, yeah. as you can see on the screen, uh, there are few indoor units. Each one is connected uh, separately and independently to one in outdoor unit. Uh, and of course, uh, you have an ability to, uh, to connect your local controller uh, here and to control your indoor unit uh, locally uh, by thermostat or by IR controller, uh, IR remote. That's it about multi-split, and finally we reach VRV, VRF systems. Uh, this kind of, um, I would say, they are smart, and so, so kind of uh, comprehensive systems. Uh, very, very, uh, very smart and very, um, uh, very, uh, I would say uh, energy saved, uh, which means that if you have few indoor units connected to the same outdoor by bus, uh, and for example you want to uh, set different temperatures in in, in uh, each uh, room, uh, it's possible uh, here in these systems uh, all of the indoor units are connected parallelly to the uh, one communication bus, as you can see here on the green line. And on the other side, they uh, 
can be connected locally to the thermostat. Um, that's it uh, about the uh, uh, the HVAC systems. Now, finally, we reach the uh, main target of the presentation: our devices. So we have a Coolmaster Net. Coolmaster Net is a device, is a gateway that designed uh, specifically in order to communicate between the home automation system and the uh, air conditioner system. Um, if we will take, for example, um, Daikin system, it will um, it will be consisted up to 64 different indoors um, according to the uh, manufacturer demand. What I mean, I mean that in uh, you can control 64 different units uh, simultaneously in one line. Okay. In overall, we have uh, we support 256 units in Coolmaster Net. Uh, this is the maximum uh, capability of our device. Now, Coolmaster Net is connected to the same bus, to the same communication bus um, as uh, exactly like uh, indoors and outdoors. In the case that you have split system and you want to connect it uh, to the cool master as well, the only uh, the only uh, solution that you have is to connect it through an uh, adapter. Uh, the the adapter uh, uh, these adapters are uh, uh, they exist only in Daikin and Mitsubishi. Uh, systems. So if you have one of them, uh, Daikin or Mitsubishi, you will be able to connect split system to Coolmaster as well. Otherwise, you need to uh, purchase a cooling net and it will be a great solution for uh, connecting split systems. Okay. Um, as you can see here, these are our brands. All of the brands uh, that we that Coolmaster Net supports. So as you can see here, we have the the, the majority. I would say the, all all of the uh, uh, VLV VLF uh, manufacturers uh, present here: Daikin, Hitachi, Kentatsu, Fujitsu, whatever. Um, let's go a little bit deeper. In the case, as I said previously, Coolmaster Net supports a few, few different uh, brands. And if you um, want to connect, for example, um, different brands at the same, uh, the same uh, device, you need to configure your device accordingly. So if you ever hold Coolmaster Net in your hands, probably you saw that on the right, uh, next to the screen, on the right side, you have a door. If you open the door, you will see 60, 16 different uh, deep switches. Uh, they are arranged in four uh, rows, four by four, and the uh, responsibility, their responsibility is uh, uh, just to, to configure the line accordingly. I mean, for Daikin, it must be Daikin, and for Mitsubishi, it must be uh, Mitsubishi, respectively. Um, all of the instructions about about the uh, configurations uh, are uh, they they exist in um, in our brochures and uh, manuals. Uh, now about the lines, uh, we have in overall seven different lines for HVAC systems. So line one and line two here, they uh, handle Daikin, Mitsubishi, Panasonic, Toshiba, and Hitachi. Line 4, 5, 6, 7 handle LG, Gree, Samsung, Midea, Tren, and Kentatsu, and also Mitsubishi Heavy. And line 8 handle, uh, uh, handles uh, Fujitsu. Uh, okay, let's make a short conclusion what we have until now. So, uh, okay, I lost my mouse. Uh, the first uh, 
the first point. First point is L8. Uh, the connector, the USB connector responsible for uh, Fujitsu devices. Um, Fujitsu devices, I must say, they, they connect it via uh, external adapter, via one adapter, and uh, supplied by Fujitsu. Uh, number two and number three. These are the power jacks responsible for the external power, and it's very, very important to, to mention here that our device is uh, as a DC power device and powered by 9 to 24 volts DC. Number four and number seven are responsible for home automation systems. In the case you have RS-232 or RS-485, uh, either one of them, uh, you need, they must be connected uh, to these terminals. Number 5, 6, 10, 11, 12, and 13, all of the uh, lines uh, are responsible for the HVAC systems. Uh, number 8, it's an RG45 and Ethernet connection. Uh, in the case you have Modbus IP or any, you, you know, just any, any kind of uh, net and you want to connect to the Coolmaster net, uh, iridium. One of the ways to connect is uh, by RG45. Uh, number 16 is uh, the, there are deep switches. Number nine. Um, number nine is especially uh, developed uh, external IOS. It's general purpose input outputs. Uh, the, the main uh, target is to, in a case you have external sensors, and you want them to operate uh, the air conditioners, you can connect them directly to Coolmaster Net. For example, if you have a pile around alarm and you want to switch uh, all the units off, you need to connect the sensor pile around alarm to the to the device, and uh, the the operation will uh, be performed. Um, number fourteen is a mini USB responsible for uh, reprogramming, upgrading firmware, whatever. And 15, 15 is a KNX. Uh, we have a KNX ability. The Coolmaster Net is a KNX device. And if you, I must say that the, the uh, usual, the, the, the usual case that Coolmaster Net comes without KNX. So if you want to, to purchase uh, KNX device, you need to mention it in your order. Uh, but in general, Coolmaster Net is a KNX device and we support KNX protocol. Okay, uh, the same picture, just to uh, to, to, to be clear again, um, green arrows are uh, responsible for the HVAC systems, uh, home automation and BMS, uh, blue arrows, and the uh, Ethernet. Um, that's it. All the features that we have uh, in Coolmaster, I will repeat again, we have an ability to connect to, uh, let's run it randomly, we have an ability to connect to SDDP, KNX, we have um, uh, general uh, input outputs for connecting external uh, sensors. We have an RS-232, RS-485, Modbus RTU, and um, ASCII code. And that's, uh, yeah, that's all basically. Now a short explanation about cooling net, what is it? Uh, basically cooling net exactly works exactly in, uh, as a cool master net. The only difference is very, uh, uh, actually it's a very big difference. <laughs> Coolmaster Net uh, can control only one unit. And, okay, sorry, Cooling Net can control only one unit and Coolmaster Net can uh, control few, uh, up to 256 different units simultaneously. Uh, and uh, of course, Cooling Net uh, connects to the local 
uh, interface, I mean, cooling net uh, must be connected uh, at the line, to the line of the thermostat, and uh, the unit itself uh, can be operated uh, from both of them, thermostat and cooling, cooling net. Uh, in the case of split system, this is the most useful device. In case of multi-split, again, the same picture. So if you uh, want to connect, um, if you have any project, if you have any building apartment, and you have, for example, four or five uh, indoor units, and it's not VRF, it's uh, multi-split, it's uh, much more easier for you to uh, connect few cool links uh, separately to the uh, indoors. And um, the abilities of uh, cooling net, they are exactly the same at full net. We have an RS-232, RS-485. Uh, for Modbus of you, we have an uh, R, uh, RG-45 for uh, Modbus IP. And we have uh, KNX. The HVC systems are being connected to the green, uh, green uh, terminal. Uh, yep, that's it. Any questions, guys? Okay, if you have uh, questions, you can ask uh, in questions part. There is no chat, unfortunately, in this version of webinar. So you can go to questions part and ask there. Uh, and we are now uh, moving to another part, uh, to the driver part. And I am going to show you how to work with the driver. OK. So uh, this is a new driver, which is based not on uh, pure JavaScript, but on a channels system. And here is one of the examples. So here we control one air conditioner and have one simulation button. Uh, all control channels are available where they are usually available uh, in the device panel in here. And we have a cool master net network and it has an IP port and other things. You should just change an IP. And we have an uh, air conditioner in here with its address as a name. So L1001 means that it's going to control uh, line 1, air conditioner 001. So if the address will be another one, you will just uh, change this name in here. Or if you need many air conditioners, you just clone these and you just change its name like this and this. Okay, so in here we have comments which go to the system and feedbacks which we can monitor from the, system, from, uh, the cool master net. So here we have power, fan speed, mode. Temp increase, decrease, or temp set, if we want to set up the value of the temperature. And swing and simulation, if we want to check without connection to actual air conditioning line. As for feedbacks, we have if we uh, have it on or off, power. Fan speed, mode, desired temperature, current temperature, and unit. So uh, what we have uh, in here is easily checkable in program properties. So once we press this button, for example, this is one of the modes button buttons. So it has mode as a comment and mode as a feedback, and it sends the trigger values zero and zero. This one for humidity sense 3, heating sense 1, 
ventilation sense 2 and auto sense 4 something like that so each of these they are connected to channels uh, so let me turn on the cool master and now it's on and connected and has an IP address of 10100 okay and maybe I'm going to have a video for you hello now you can see me and this is the cool master okay so what I'm doing now is I'm running the emulator and you see nothing because no air conditioners are added and it is not connected but I'm running this uh, simulation 3 button and it starts simulating three air conditioners and one of them is L1001 which is already added into the driver so this is the one and here I can change the mode or I can change the mode from here okay and uh, what I can do here is to change the temperature 22, 21 and so on and I can change the temperature from here and after one two seconds you're going to see it in here changed so also on and off and the feedback about on and off available in here okay so this is it this is the driver uh, this is all quite simple uh, I hope you understand that, uh, but let me show you what happens when you want to connect it to another user interface. So let me open some kind of a user interface like this one, for example. Okay, so this is a real user interface. Uh, let us see what it looks like it has a full HD resolution and it is sliding like that so what you can do is you can press on one of these control items if you press on a climate control for example on a temperature you're going to see uh, this temperature part and you have here some buttons like set point and sensor what it shows you on off and control okay so let us make uh, make it control uh, another air conditioner so we want to con Control um, air conditioner. So we imp so we merge two of these projects. We merge them, and it says the it has the same script names. It's it's all because I already merged them to test. <laughs> so what I do is I delete it. Okay, no need for that and script this one not needed this one not needed okay let's imagine that this never happened and merge them again okay they become one project and these two pages which we don't need uh, they are also added but we are not going to need them what we are really going to need is the driver which is added in here which was not added before so 
it is added now uh, and let me delete this one and this one and clone it and control L1003 for example okay so uh, what I do is uh, I want to control power on off uh, I go and see this as trigger button 01 which is okay uh, I have here quite old version of editor so I have to remember this name button off okay uh, on a climate room one so uh, in the next version which is going to be available after maybe a week or two it is going to be automated but now uh, let me show you how to set up tokens send token and you need to specify the token of this image because now for native drivers it is automatic automatically but for non-native drivers okay, button off value okay so if you work with Iridium for KNX, HDL and others uh, for native drivers this is automatic but for third-party drivers this is not automatic and this will be fixed okay that's it so let us check and we see that power in feedback and power in comments already added here and F1 is the temperature we, which we would like to monitor dollar F1 means that we are going to see the variable of this temperature and F1 means that we are going to see one digit after floating point uh, we don't have to use this we can use dollar V or some other things which Iridium support okay desired temp we change, we send it here in value and the sensor dollar V uh, can be the same dollar F1 you will see the difference current temperature will be sent here in value all right and here we have a level which is go uh, which is going to control our temp set same set token because it's a level climate room one three one value okay and desired temp will be its feedback okay I think it's enough let me try okay so I go to this page and I see here 20 and I change the temperature and it changes okay and this temperature is something which we see from the air conditioner uh, and here we have a small problem with the button and we can fix this problem by going to states and setting up the size of the font okay so now it's, now it's good uh, all right also this thing uh, can give us uh, feedback of desired temp and also these buttons they should be trigger buttons for 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 so uh, let's make this one as 0 for example 0, 0 and what we do is we change the mode in here okay and same for send token and so on so uh, I think everything should be understood from this uh, place uh, 
as you know, Iridium has now a server part, a controller part. So you can also use server and client version. So let me show you. This one is server and this one is client. I, I prepared this just a few minutes before the webinar. Okay, so this one is client and uh, this server we can set up. This is a driver in the server and it is already in the server on this PC. So I am running the server from a Redium installation. Here it is. Wait a little until it's on. And then I can go and see to the browser and connect to the server locally. Okay, the password. And in channels part, we are going to see feedbacks. In channels and feedbacks, we are going to see here, you see, 17 degrees is on L1001. And we can change it. to 22, for example, and it's now 22, okay? So uh, after uh, some time, when it changes, you are going to, you're going to see this um, trend, and this trend will show you uh, different levels for temperatures and you can set up for any kind of trend to be uh, shown as this one. All right, uh, what else? We can run this page and it will connect to Iridium server comments. This was created automatically uh, by right-clicking and selecting a command create server project. So the, all the mm, driver comments were moved to the server. So it will now connect to the server and show us everything from the server. Okay, and you can connect to server the biggest is uh, something like 65,000 points and you can log all this and you can make trends and graphs and analytics and send it to cloud and so on. So everything can be done with the server or without. Also in a server you can do a very beautiful thing. You can switch between different protocols and have a logic without programming. So uh, you can receive the information from the tag and you can send it to channel and you can uh, have math and scaling everything. Okay? And you can give uh, something like if the feedback from desired temp uh, is is more than, uh, let's say, some kind of value or more than what we receive from
current temp. Okay. Then do this. And in output, you can use another part, another um, protocols and uh, anything. So this logic can be done inside the uh, Iridium server. And this is mostly what I wanted to tell you. Okay, so this is a typical project for Iridium now. And I see one question yet. If you have questions, you can write it down now uh, in the questions part. Is it possible to write a different room temperature into the indoor from Iridium? Uh, <laughs> you mean to write this into Coolmaster? So uh, you mean to connect the temperature? Uh, okay, I understand you. I understand it now. Uh, not quite. Uh, it is uh, actually what we see in a cool master is what we see from air conditioner. And we can control only set point. We cannot control the temperature which air conditioner sees. But we can switch the logic of air conditioner control from air conditioner itself to iridium. So you can set up the logic inside the Iridium, add there another one, another temperature sensor, and work from this logic. And then control the air conditioner from this logic. So it is possible, but it is uh, not so simple because you will need um, you will need to have a very good uh, program for controlling the temperature. If you have one, then no problem at all. You can set up the temp this program into Iridium. Okay. Uh, Renato asking how many server tags for one HVAC unit? Uh, you can count it here. So, one unit is power, fan speed, mode, desired temp, current temp unit. Uh, actually, some of them maybe you won't need, okay, if you don't change some of them. But uh, you will certainly need power and you will certainly need uh, desired temp and current temp. So three of them are for sure. Okay. All right, so thank you very much. Uh, the record of this webinar and the presentation will be available for you uh, on the website, I guess. And uh, see you on other webinars. Thank you very much. Goodbye.